The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's are milder. And science provides the proof. Yes, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Test after test produced conclusive evidence of Lucky Strike's greater mildness. But that's not all. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove... Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. There's no doubt when you light up a Lucky, you get a smoother smoking, milder tasting cigarette. And you enjoy the rich taste of fine tobacco because... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment. So for the rich taste of fine tobacco, for smoothness and mildness with never a rough puff, light up a Lucky. Yes, prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't often that our star goes out on a personal appearance tour. But having decided to go, a lot of preparations have to be made. At the moment, Jack is in conference with Steve Bradley, his publicity man. Yes, sir, Benny, this is the greatest idea you ever had. You just listen to me and we'll pack every theater from the sun-kissed shores of California to the rock-bound coast of Maine. But, Steve... What an idea. Hand me that phone. I'll order the posters right now. We'll have billboards all over the country. <laughs> But, Steve, look, Steve, look, I've never been billed that way before. Jack Benny, the platinum ball of fire. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I've never worked with fans or balloons. I'm way ahead of you, Benny. Now, instead of fans or balloons, you'll come out in a blue spot and do your stuff with two violins. What? At the end of the dance, the violins open and pigeons fly out. <laughs> Pigeons? Certainly. We gotta do something to take their attention away from those skinny legs of yours. <laughs> now look, Steve, I'm not gonna go for any of your crazy... Excuse me, there's someone at the door. What a silly idea. Jack Benny, the platinum ball of fire. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Where's Rochester? That's what I'd like to know. Last night he asked me if he could have the evening off. I haven't seen him since. Well, Jack, maybe he... Steve! Steve Bradley. Mary, Mary Livingston. Long time no see. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you know Steve Bradley? Well, certainly he was my publicity man when I worked at the May Company. <laughs> no. Yes, sir, I gave this little girl one of the most extensive publicity campaigns in my career. In two short weeks, I raised her from the bargain basement to the stock encounter on the fifth floor. <laughs> well... And this, mind you, during the heat of a presidential campaign. <laughs> all right, all right, calm down. I don't doubt that you're a great publicity man, but you'll have to think up another stunt for me. I'm not going to go for those pigeons. Uh, what's that supposed to be? I don't know. Steve's got some ideas about my personal appearance tour. He wants me to work with pigeons. <laughs> well, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I could just see the finale. A pigeon swoops down, takes off your toupee, and lays an egg in it. <laughs> Mary, this is going to be a high-class show. Just wait till you see it. You know, we open Wednesday night in Pasadena. By the way, Steve, how are they doing at the box office? Great, great. I had 50,000 tickets printed up. I'm going to need another 50,000. 50,000? How do you expect to sell all those tickets? Easy. On the face of the ticket, instead of printing Jack Benny, I put Rose Bowl game. <laughs> what? They're going like hotcakes. Uh, Steve, we're not going to do our show at the Rose Bowl. We'll be at the Pasadena Civic Auditorium. And I better book something into the Rose Bowl. It'll be jammed. <laughs> Now, 
Now, look, Steve, are you working for me or... Mary, would you get that, please? Okay. Hello? Well, lucky me. Every time I get a wrong number, it's a dame. <laughs> Phil, it's me, Mary. Okay, okay. You're not a bad number either, Liv. <laughs> Well, thanks. Jack is busy right now. He'll call you back. Well, look, Livy, I'm not at home. I'm at the photographer's. Steve Bradley called me this morning, told me he had an idea he was going to talk over with Jackson, but in the meantime, I should rush down and have publicity pictures taken. So tell Jackson to hurry. I can catch cold standing here like this. <laughs> what? These pigeons ain't keeping me warm. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell him. Jack, Phil wants to talk to you. All right, hand me the phone. Here. If a pigeon answer, hangs up. Hangs up? <laughs> Instead of Pasadena, we should be playing in Czechoslovakia. Hello, Phil. What? Hello, Phil. <laughs> Mumbles Livingston's getting hard to follow, ain't you? <laughs> hey, Jackson, I want to talk to you about the band arrangement on that personal appearance tour. You got a minute? Sure, what is it? Well, look, uh, how do you want my orchestra to dress in blue suits or sport clothes? Neither, Phil. I want them to wear evening clothes. Look, Jackson, the only evening clothes they got are pajamas. <laughs> what? And they can't wear those. Half the drawstrings are missing. <laughs> look, Phil, let them wear whatever they want. But look at uh, uh, but have Sammy Now look, have Sammy the drummer In a blue suit Because he'll be sitting up high Okay And Phil, when I'm out on the stage Telling jokes I want your boys to act As though they're enjoying it It looks good to the audience Oh, all right Took care of that, Jackson I even thought of the people In the balcony So I painted a smile On the top of Sammy's head <laughs> Oh, wonderful <laughs> Another thing, Dad We're gonna have a little problem With Remley A problem? Yeah But everything will be all right If we let him sit behind a piano but, Phil, I want to look like we got a big orchestra. Why shouldn't Frankie sit out in the open? Because every time a spotlight shines in his face, he jumps up and yells, I didn't do it! I didn't do it! No. The only way we can calm him down is to beat him with a rubber hose. <laughs> Phil, I'm busy. Arrange the orchestra the best way you can. So long. So long, Clyde. Don't forget to bring the hose. <laughs> that Phil is the craziest guy. Hey, Benny, while you was on the phone, I got a sensational idea. Huh? Oh, Nelly. Now, listen. <laughs> When you get to Milwaukee, it'll be the start of fire prevention week. Yes, yes, yes. So for a publicity stunt, we'll have you jump from the top of a 12-story building into a net. It's never been done before. <laughs> what do you mean it's never been done before? Many people have done stunts like that, jumping off a building into a net. A hair net? <laughs> <laughs> what? Think of the publicity. Why, the paper will be full of it. Not only the story, but the picture. Ah, I can see the flowers now. Now cut that out! <laughs> I want my publicity simple and dignified. So, you, now who can that be? Come in. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Barry. Hello, Don. Hello, Don. Come on in, fellas. Hello, boys. <laughs> hello, boys. Hello, hello Mary. Mary. They talk. <laughs> Don. Don, they talked. It's the first time I ever heard them talk. <laughs> Mary. Mary, they talked. Hello, fellas. <laughs> it was too good to last. Now, Don, I know you brought the boys over to try out the commercial, but I'm busy right now. Steve Bradley, my publicity man, is laying out my personal appearance tour. You know, I open in Pasadena Wednesday night. Wednesday night? Oh, darn it. I wish I could go then. Well, why can't you? I bought two tickets to the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> Don, you'll still see my show. I'll explain it to you later. Now, take the boys home, will oh, you? Oh, but Jack, this will only take just a minute. Now, the reason I want you to hear the commercial is because for the past few weeks, they've been singing popular songs. And this time, they have something classical, something that even Toscanini would be proud of. Toscanini? Well, all right, Don. Steve, this will only take a minute. We can talk later. Don, what's the title of this thing the boys are going to do? Ponchielli's Dance of the Hours from La Gioconda. Well... 
this we've got to hear. <laughs> Take it, boys. <laughs> Scientific tests prove they are the best. Lucky's, yes, lucky. Are smoother than all the rest, milder by test. Gee, this is beautiful. <laughs> Let's light a lucky cause there is never a puff. Mary, give me your handkerchief. That ever is wrong. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? What's this? On a lucky, take a pop. On I a lucky, knew take a pop. Take a pop, cause you'll never ever find a pop that's rough. Never take a pop that's rough. Never take a pop that's rough. Take a pop, cause you'll never get enough. Made of light and fine tobacco, smoke a lucky. Round and firm and fully packed, so smoke a lucky. When are they through? Light up a lucky, you'll be right. With a lucky, don't be late. Start today, cause we know you're gonna say you like the best. Lucky strikes is much the best. Take Sounds a like lucky from your best. Gang. Make a test, you'll agree they are the best. For lucky strike means fine tobacco. La 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 la. Don, la, take them home. Light and fine and mild tobacco. La 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 la. That was very good, Don. Really a great number. Well, thanks, Jack. Well, we've got to be running along now. So long, Mary. So long, Don. Bye, fellas. Goodbye, Goodbye Mary. Mary. So long, fellas. Mm. Get out of here. <laughs> now, where, uh, where were we, Steve? Is there any other idea you've got for publicity? Just one. What is it? When we arrive in Kansas City, I want you to walk down the street, play on your violin, and lead a thousand cows into the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Into the slaughterhouse? How do you know they'll follow me? Follow you? They'll be pushing you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Oh, Jack. What? When you go out to buy a wardrobe for your stage show, I'd like to go with you. Wardrobe? Well, certainly aren't you going to buy some new suits? Mary, I just bought a new suit. In fact, you were with me. Jack, that was in 1936. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> I haven't even started to wear the second pair of pants. <laughs> but maybe you're right, Mary. This suit I'm wearing now is old enough to send to Fred Allen. Hey, wait a minute, Benny. Wait a minute. You gonna send that old suit to Fred Allen? Yes, why? That's a great human interest story, Benny. It'll be the biggest thing since that panhandler asked you for a dime and you gave him 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, don't mention that in this house. It's costing me a fortune in dishes. <laughs> now look, Steve. Oh, for heavens. Come in. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Look out for these firecrackers. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, what are you doing? I'm celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> 4th of July? This is only the 7th of May. It is? Well, certainly. Boy, this daylight saving time sure has me mixed up. <laughs> Look, kid, don't blame it on daylight saving time. You're always mixed up. What'd you come over for, anyway? Oh, I came over to warn you about a new quiz program. It's a fake. A new quiz program? Uh-huh. I answered every question right, and they didn't even give me a refrigerator, a Bendix, or anything. Well, what station is it on? Oh, it isn't on the radio. These people ring your doorbell, come right into your house, and ask you questions. <laughs> Dennis, that was the census taker. Census taker? Sir, every 10 years, the government goes all over the country counting noses. Why don't they just count people? <laughs> what? Suppose somebody does have two noses. It won't throw them off much. <laughs> Look, kid, counting noses is just an expression. Oh. Oh, hello, Mary. I didn't see you. I know. I was hiding. 
<laughs> I don't blame you. Neither do I. Who's he? This is Steve Bradley, my publicity man. Oh, yeah. And you know, my father does that kind of work for Universal Studios. He does? I didn't know that. Sure. Right now, he's publicizing a picture called Coca-Cola for Mark Anthony. What? It's a sequel to Champagne for Caesar. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a cycle now. They're working on a new one called Strongheart for Lassie. <laughs> now, Dennis, I, I got to go and buy some new clothes. Now, let's hear your song you're going to do on the program. Okay. And when you finish, I want you to... Wait a minute, kid. Hold it. Well, what's the matter? I just heard the back door open and close. It must be Rochester sneaking in. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> Is that you sneaking in the back door? It ain't Georgie J! <laughs> Rochester, come in here I want to talk to you Yes, sir Now, Rochester, last night you asked me If you could have the evening off, didn't you? Uh-huh Now, that was last night Now, it's 11 o'clock the next morning Uh-huh Now, where have you been? Well, boss, we're going away soon And some friends of mine on Central Avenue Gave me a farewell party Now, wait a minute, Rochester Every night this week You've been to a farewell party It's the same one We just adjourned during the daytime <laughs> What? When the gold of the day meets the blue of the night, I go where the wild goose goes. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, I haven't got time to talk to you. Now, I got to listen to Dennis sing his song. Let's have it, kid. Just a minute. Dennis, give me that firecracker. Okay, here you are. Now, go ahead with... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> silly. Go ahead and sing. Say that falling in love is wonderful. It's wonderful. So they say. And with a moon up above, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Oh, they tell me I can't recall who said it I know I never read it I only know they tell me That love is grand and The thing that's known as romance Is wonderful Wonderful in every way, so they say. I can't recall who said it. I know I never read it. I only know. That's known as romance is wonderful, wonderful in every way. So they Very good, Dennis. And now that you've used your beautiful voice to win yourself back into my favor, would you do something for me? Oh, sure, Mr. Benny. What is it? Go home. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I gotta run along, Benny. See a man about those pigeons. Look, Steve, you can forget it. I'm not gonna do a strip tease act with a bunch of pigeons. Okay, okay. I'll be at the office if you want me. Jack, if you want me to go downtown with you to pick out a suit, we better go now. Okay, Mary. Oh, Rochester, where's the car? In the garage. Well, come on, we want you to drive us downtown. Yes, sir. Jack, why don't you keep your garage cleaner? I'll straighten it up someday. Come on, get in the car. 
Go ahead, start the car, Rochester. Yes, sir, but first I gotta get a little water. Oh, is the radiator dry? No, I'm taking an aspirin. I know what's coming. <laughs> Never mind that. Just start the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> It works every time. <laughs> Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. <laughs> there we are. Say, Jack, there's something wrong here. Why is the car leaning way over to the left? I don't know. Rochester, why are we leaning over to the left? Remember last week when you sent the car to the garage to have the wheels aligned? Yes. Well, only three came home. <laughs> Starring Claudette Colbert. Stop being silly. How, how, how can a car run with a missing wheel? I strapped a roller skate under the axle. Well, slow down when you cross the car tracks. Well, here we are, Mary. There's the store across the street. Rochester, there's a parking space. Where? Between that truck and the convertible. But I can't get into that space. It's too small. Well, put our bumper up against the truck and push it. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> well, Miss Livingston and I will get out here and you find a parking space. Yes, sir. Here's the store, Mary. Let's go in. Now, well, let's see. Where is the, uh... Hiya, bud. <laughs> What's new? Huh? Oh, hello. Hello. Come on, Mary. Let's get it. <laughs> Who is that? That's that racetrack tout I'm always running in. Now, let's see. I wonder... Oh, good afternoon. May I help you, sir? Yes, yes. I I'd like to buy a new suit. I don't blame you. <laughs> what? I'm Mr. Kearns, and I'll be glad to show you our new spring line. Good, good. But first, tell me, what is the price range here? Oh, our suits start at $25 and go up to $150. Well, I, I wouldn't want to wear anything as cheap as $25, and yet I wouldn't want to... Go way up to 150. I understand. I'd like something in the middle, say about $30. <laughs> oh, Jack, why don't you get a good suit for a change? After all, you're going to wear it on the stage every night. Stage? Are you an actor? Why, yes, 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 I am. My name is Manasha Skolny. I mean, Jack. <laughs> I just happened to be thinking of him. I was reading. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Jack Benny. Oh. Now, Mr. Kearns, uh, what, uh, what color suit would you suggest that I get? Huh? Well, now a lot of men select a color to match their hair or their eyes. Let's see, uh, your eyes are blue, aren't they? Bluer than the lips of a schoolboy at 40 below. <laughs> oh, Jack. What is it, Mary? Here's a very pretty suit. It's gabardine. Oh, good, good. I like gabardine. Oh, I'm sure that suit would look very nice on you, Mr. Benny. Yes, but it's forty-five dollars. Huh? Well, there's a whistle in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care so much about that, but I think I'll take the oh, suit. Oh, fine, fine. I'll go upstairs and get our tailor so he can measure you for any alteration. Thank you. Thank you. Say, Mary, I'm going to walk to the back of the store see if there's anything else I'd like. Want to join me? No, I'm tired. I'll just wait right here. Okay. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da grease paint. Da-da-da-da-da-da count the house. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Yep. That gabardine suit will look nice. $45, though. Oh, well. There's no people Hey, like Bud. <laughs> Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. Who, me? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, uh, 
I'm buying a suit. What kind? Gabardine. Uh uh. <laughs> what? Get a wool suit. Why why should I get wool? On account of the pants. They're great in the back stretch. <laughs> But I, I like gabardine Look, I'm telling you for your own good, get wool But, uh, Don't take my word for it, look at the breeding The breeding? It's out of Mary's Little Lamb by Baba Black Sheep <laughs> Well, look, I'm gonna buy a gabardine suit and that settles it Okay, it's your dough what a guy Whenever I run into him, oh, I have Oh, that... there you are, Mr. Benny Yes, yeah, I was just looking around Well, I'd like you to meet our tailor Mr. Benny, this is Mr. Nelson How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? Now, I don't want to seem impatient But... But I'm in a hurry Can, can we get on with the measuring? Why, certainly Mr. Nelson, do you have your tape measure with you? Yes Now, hold still, little man Little man? You're buying the one with the whistle in the pocket, aren't you? <laughs> Look, Mr. Nelson, just take the measurements uh, Very well uh, Collar, 60 Collar, 60 uh, Shoulders, 80 Shoulders, 80 <laughs> uh, Chest uh, Chest well, how did it get way down there? <laughs> Never mind that. A right sleeve, 34. Right sleeve, 34. A left sleeve, 21. <laughs> left sleeve, 21. You want people to see your wristwatch, don't you? <laughs> Oh, and stop wasting my time Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny Would you like wide or narrow cuffs on your trousers? Well, what's the difference? Well, there really isn't much difference But most people prefer the wide cuffs Why? Well, haven't you had it happen That you accidentally drop a coin And it falls into the cuff of your pants? No <laughs> He always catches it before it hits the ground Yes Now, Mr. Nelson, when will my suit be ready? In two weeks Two weeks? But I wanted it for my personal appearance well, I'm sorry, but it'll take two weeks You mean I can't have my brand new suit for my opening in Pasadena? No, but if you like, we'll run an ad in the paper telling them you bought one <laughs> Well, I've had enough of this I'm not going to buy the suit at all But Jack, if you don't have a suit to wear, what are you going to do about your personal appearance in Pasadena? I'll show you Let me use that phone Hello, Steve. Buy some corn. We're going to use those pigeons after all. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's get out. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... In a cigarette, mildness and enjoyment go together. So light up a Lucky because... Lucky Strike is milder. Yes, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. And no wonder. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette, and... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. So for a milder-tasting cigarette with never a rough puff, Smoke a Lucky. You'll enjoy the smooth, rich taste of Lucky's fine tobacco. You'll prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. I'm glad I didn't buy that suit from those smart aleck guys in that store. Oh, Jack, forget it. Gee, I wonder where Rochester parked the car. I guess we'll have to walk clear around the block to find it. No, we won't, Mary. Wait a minute. I got something here that'll bring Rochester right to us. <laughs> Jack, you didn't take... Right out of the pocket. <laughs> Those guys aren't going to push me around. Come on. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned to the Amos Mandy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 